Look at the gorilla in its natural habitat, the jungle of Mason, Ohio. Watch as the gorilla dines on a diet of bananas, or whatever they eat. Observe as he climbs the building to destroy the plains as his ancestor, King Kong, did. Watch as the gorilla climbs his tree to return home. How glorious is it to see the majestic gorilla return to its native home of Mason, Ohio. So, uh, remember that time that we could like go into stadiums and like watch sporting events? Too soon. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, so it was a couple of years ago. I was actually able to attend a University of Kentucky Wildcats basketball game. Huge fan, if you didn't know. And so this was March Madness time. And so it's the round of 32. And so we got this two ticket set, like it, two tickets. Sorry. It was one ticket for two games. There we go. That's what I'm trying to say. So the first game was Michigan versus Louisville. And if I had to choose a team, I'd probably choose Michigan to beat Louisville because I don't like Louisville at all. And so Michigan does. They win the game. We get to watch that. We actually were all the way. I mean, when I say this, we were all the way at the top. Last row all the way. It was a hike to get up there. And so we uh, we watched the first game from there. And the second game, we were in a plan mode. We were going to try to make our way down to the to the lower way and get closer tickets. And so what my what we did was we bought some tickets from the fans that were there prior, which would have been Michigan fans. And so we bought those tickets. There was one ticket that was really close to the floor. And then there were two tickets that were kind of in like the middle bowl. So my parents like, here, take the closer ticket. That will be great for you. So I start making my way down there. And there were a lot of UK fans around me. But when I started making my way down the steps, I noticed that the team that we're playing, Wichita State, is is yellow, and there's a lot of fans there too. So I start making my way, and I find the row that I'm supposed to get in. I'm like, okay. I look down the row, and it's all yellow. Every single shirt is yellow. I'm kind of in the middle of the section, so I decide I'm going to make the make my way. And so I made my way slowly but surely into the section. And I quickly realized that not only was I surrounded by Wichita State fans, I was in the dead center. Like, here's a picture. Here, check this out real quick. Yeah, so that shows exactly of where I was. I was dead center around all these Wichita State fans, and you best believe I was scared to death. There was this old lady next to me, and she kind of said, Honey, I sold that ticket to your uncle. And I didn't realize you guys were all UK fans. Well, we were all wearing blue, so what? Ah, uh, it doesn't matter. I was scared to death. There were fans giving me stares, and I didn't know what to do. Good news of the story. Eventually, I made my way outside and, and, and outside that row, and kind of made my way to my parents uh, to kind of get in a safer spot to watch the game because I knew I wasn't going to be able to enjoy the game. So I got out of all of those Wichita State fans and reached my family. And I got to watch the University of Kentucky Wildcats beat Wichita State 65-62. to 62. It was a great game. You know, in that story, I was in a situation where, you know, it was UK versus Wichita State, and there was these two sides, and I had on one side, but yet I caught myself in a bad situation. So today... What I want us to do is I want us to look at a character that kind of caught himself in a bad situation as well. So turn with me to 1 Samuel 17. That's where we're going to be. We're actually going to be in this story skipping around a little bit. So you're going to have to stay with me, pay attention to the verses I'm calling out, and stick with me on this one. Our main character, David. David is our main character, and our one of our big villainous characters is Goliath. Some things you need to know about Goliath, he is a gigantic man. And the Bible talks, it says he's six cubits. A cubit is 18 inches, so 18, if I did the math right, 18 times 6 is a big number. Divided by 12, 
equals nine feet because 12 inches are in a feet. He is nine feet tall. I don't know if you know anybody nine feet. I don't. And that's about two of me. Not really because I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm six foot. Not really. I'm 5'11". Didn't make the cut. So he's nine feet tall. Goliath is nine feet tall. And he is on the side of the Philistine army. And the Philistine army is on one side of this valley. And on the other side is the Israelites. And so we have this battle that kind of takes place. And so Goliath, in his mighty might, is where we're going to pick up. 1 Samuel 17 in verse 8. Turn there with me really quick. We're going to stop in verse 11, so be with me. Verse 8, and he stood, he being Goliath, stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, Why have you come out to draw up for battle? Am I not a Philistine, and are you not servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, I defy the ranks of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and Israel, all of Israel, heard these words of the Philistines, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. So think of it this way. Israel and Saul, this character, this group over on this side, is the good guys. They have God with them. You know, they are the Israelites that are following God. Philistines, not so much. They are not that way whatsoever. And so Goliath is challenging in this battle. On one side, if you bring one guy and he beats me, we will be your servants. But if I beat him, you will become our servants. A big task up ahead. This is where we meet our hero. We're going to need a hero in this story. And so David becomes this hero. And David, he is the youngest in his family, and he's a shepherd. So he works, looks after the flocks and kind of takes care of them. And so he's a shepherd. And so he his job right now, instead of watching his sheep, he's getting food for his brothers who are at this war with the Israelites. I'm sorry, with the Philistines. His brothers are on the Phil- Philistines. Or his brothers are on the Israelites. There it is. Verse 20, let's skip to there. Verse 20, jump around with me a little bit here. Verse 20, and it says, And David rose in the early morning, and he left the sheep with the keeper, and took the provisions, and went, as Jesse, his dad, had commanded him. And he came to the encampment, as the host was going out the battle line, shouting the war cry. Verse 22, And David left the things in charge of the keeper of the baggage, and ran to the ranks, and went and greeted his brothers. As he talked with them, behold, the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by the name, came up out of the ranks of the Philistines, and spoke the same words as before, and David heard him. 24, all the men of Israel, when they saw the men, fled from him, and were much afraid. And the men of Israel said, have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he has come up to defy Israel, and the king will enrich the man who kills him with great riches. And will give him his daughter and make his father's house free and in in Israel. And so David responds and says to the men who stood by him, What shall be done for the men who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him in the same way. So shall be done to the man who kills him. David is kind of questioning the people here saying, What is going on? You have this Philistine that's trying to conquer the Israelites, and no one's standing up to fight against him. And a little bit of foreshadowing going on here. And so, we can skip down a little bit to verse 34. Verse 34 says, But David said to Saul, Saul's the ruler, Your servant used to keep his for his father, his sheep for his father. And then there came a lion or a bear, and took a lamb from the flock. And I went after him, and I struck him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And if he arose against me, I came up by his beard, and struck him, and killed him. Your servant has struck down both lions and bears, and the uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them. For he has defied the armies of the living God. And David said, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. You see, David is ready for this battle, and he's ready to be engaged in this fight, because he sees that this Philistine is stepping on what God has for them, and he needs to be stopped. And so just like the lion and the bears that he defends from his flock of sheep, he is going to defend his people. 
So skip to verse 45 with me. I know we're skipping around, but you guys are following. Great. So 45. Then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come with you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied this day. The Lord will deliver you into my hand. I will strike you down and cut off your head. If we skip down, down to verse 48, it says this. When the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. Our battle set. And so, and David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone. And he slung it. And he struck the Philistine on his forehead. And the stone sank into his forehead And so he fell on his face in the ground. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a a sling and a stone and struck the Philistine and killed him. There was no sword in the hand of David. Then David ran and stood over the Philistine to take his sword and drew it over his sheath and killed him and cut off his head with it. When the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they ran and were afraid. You see, David collected five stones from the stream to kind of use this as a weapon. A man that wasn't afraid whatsoever. A very short man. I'm not short, but kind of similar to like my height. He took these stones, smooth stones, and took a slingshot and slung it and killed Goliath. You see, I don't think that these stones were, were going to be his skilled mark. I don't think that that was his special thing. I think that his special thing was his character. You see, the Philistines versus the Israelites. This is like Ohio State versus Michigan. A huge rivalry about to, like, unleash. You know, David didn't even have caution or question and stepped into the fight and had courage. You see, you you might be asking yourself, why did did David take five pebbles or stones with him? You know, it's said to believe that, you know, I don't think that David would have missed with one. You know, he made it with one. But it said that he took the other four because Goliath had brothers and sisters. And so let's say Goliath was killed and his brothers and sisters stepped out to fight for him. He wanted to be ready. That's what it's said to be believed. You see, David had courage. And to conquer our fears, we have to be urgent. We have to take action. So David strikes down Goliath. What does that mean for us? You know, what does that mean for you and for me? And we don't have, at least I hope not, we don't have nine foot giants in our lives. You know, we don't even have that problem of of kind of of war in in our lives. So, so what does it look like? I think our giants, they look like depression, anxiety, stress, fear, loneliness, isolation, I think it looks like FOMO, you know, the fear of missing out. I think it looks like family issues. I think it looks like walls that we're trying to put up to protect ourselves, but yet, you know, we're, you know, we're not even going to try to crash them down. You know, for us, our giants are in our lives, and we're just not able to take the next steps to kind of be urgent and act on them like David did. You see, David, he didn't hesitate on where his giant was. He didn't hesitate. When he got to battle, he recognized who the enemy was and how to stop him. God provide the rest. And for us, we can do the same. That for our giants in our lives, we need to have that same type of momentum, that same type of feeling that that when we face our giants, that we are not going to hesitate. We're going to be urgent. We're going to take action. And we're going to conquer what we have. So what I want you to do, um, in, in adults, if you're joining with us, do this with us as well. You know, even if you're watching, you've been watching the whole time, that's great, even better. You better be doing this, all right? So grab a pen, something to write with, and a piece of paper, scrap piece of paper. I've got mine all ready to go. I actually grabbed this Sharpie and this piece of paper right before we got up here. Really quick, just do it very fast. Do your thing, whatever it is. All righty. You know, a piece of paper is like a blank canvas. That's what Bob Ross told me. All righty, here we go. So what I want you to do is take your piece of paper, and I want you to write down your thing, whatever that thing is, whatever your giant is in your life that you're not able to stop. Write it down. Write it down on that piece of paper. 
you know, for me, I think that it actually is uh, the fear of missing out right now. I moved up to Mason, moved away from my family a little bit, my friends. I think the fear of missing out is my thing right now that I'm facing. See, David used stones to kill his giant. And so what I want us to do is kind of do a similar thing. Uh, I want us to take our piece of paper and I want us to crumble it up. Crumble it up like such. We're crushing our thing, our giants in our life. What I want you to do is I simply want you to throw it. I want you to throw it. Because I think that that will symbolize us casting our giants out and winning what we ha- what God has for us. God's going to give us that victory. So go ahead, do that with me. Great job. Great job. Throw it anywhere. Not at a human being or a pet. We don't want to bother them. Throw it. Okay, we're good to go. You see, our giants aren't as simple as throwing a piece of paper and defeating it. You know, it takes time. It takes effort. It takes a lot. But what I do know is, just like David, when we don't hesitate and urgently act, act, our lives can be changing. God's going to provide for us of what we need. Guys, have a good week, and I hope that you can conquer your giants this week. So, hey, guys, announcements for this week. First thing, Movie Monday, 7 o'clock, be there on Zoom. You're going to want to be there. Second thing, Tuesday, Thursday, middle school, Tuesday. Thursday, uh, HSM. You're going to want to be there for Lazy Lunches, 12 to 1. It's been a blast to be with you guys. And hey, we got some events coming up for students, some social distancing stuff. Parents, you're going to get some information about it soon. All right. You might be wondering, why am I whispering? Why am I being quiet? Well, guys, I have worked it out. I am on a contract now. It is time for my debut. It is time for me to go to the big stage. Let's do this. Well, hey there, CC Live, Trevor DeVage, Joey Santos. How are you doing? I, you know what? No. I, Everybody, let's go. What is happening? Hey, guys, what's what? happening? It's time to worship. <laughs> yeah, you're not leading yeah. the worship. It's time. What, what, you, what, what are you doing? Wow. What, what am I doing? I'm here yeah. to worship. That's I would what love I was to tell you I knew that Kristen's he was coming out. taking the week off. Nope, he's not. He's right there. Oh. See okay. Ya. Yeah, I, See, I think good. you... Hey, Dang. he's working hard hey, at this, just so keep, you know. Keep being the great student ministry pastor you can be, and let's stay there. I appreciate it, guys. <laughs> this, this will not help that cause, so why don't you go on backstage? <laughs> all right. Uh, all you right. do what you do. All right. They'll well, do what they do. Thanks, yeah. guys. All right. Yeah, I, I, okay, I'll see you. I'll see well, you. Well, when Joey told me pre 